Hello, and thank you for dropping by All My Art and Soul. This week is Exploring Layers, number six. And I must thank everyone for allowing me to reach over 1,000, uh, a new landmark, and very important for, get, for getting this content out there. So please um, like, subscribe, and share. So let's get on with today's video. As you can see, um, my trusty cardboard, which makes amazing lines, my Stencil Girl stencil, and some of my stencils might not be from Stencil Girl, as a subscriber mentioned. Um, I am in Canada, and our art store is Curry's Art Store, which is in uh, Northern Ontario. That's where I reside. And um, so everybody has different, different things depending on where you are. Uh, but if you like something that you see, um, I'll see if I can find out where you can get it or let you know where I got it. So yes, the water-soluble graphite sticks, and they come in different types, different sizes. Um, as you can see on the page here, I did, no, I don't think I gessoed it first. I just rolled it with some extra black and gray at the end of the previous video. And sometimes I'll do two or three pages uh, because if you saw the last video, number five, I just put out way too much paint. Don't ask me why I did that. As you can see this week, I'm being a little more conservative. This stuff is so, is it, so expensive. I know not the student grade, or, um, but the Liquitex and, of course, Golden. Um, we want to use sparingly, but we don't want that to interfere when we're working with large. So right now I'm just doing, uh, we're just exploring in our art journals. And I really love how I rolled it. I usually do it in a quadrant. Uh, well, sometimes I'll just do horizontal areas and then let it dry and then go from there. So this is your activating the surface stage. So it's good to start with something already there. It just promotes more ideas and responses right out of the gate. So I've got pink, orange, Titan buff, my yellow oxide, and that beautiful gray. And again, I want to stay with, I'm still exploring the neutral with maybe just pops of colors. Um, and if you stay to the end, you'll see how this one turns out. So... I'm just using that nice, um, just a nice brush. And as I'm beginning to use it, I realize, wow, this pink, uh, I forget the appropriate color. I'll uh, find that out and put it in the comments below. Um, it's nice and translucent. So I'm just adding, yes. Um, my next video is going to be about color, uh, the next few. And starting with the simple palette and mixing the colors that you've chosen. So it's not going to be monochromatic. It's just uh, the colors won't be straight out of the tube, which, as you know, Nicholas Wilton um, is all about making some colors, but keeping it really easy. And I decided to, I realized, yes, use my Catalyst Wedge because then if I scrape across, it will create a thinner layer. And then that's great because you want to still see what's underneath. You could also have not gone all the way across. You can leave a big section. And then that creates more of the layers that you can see through um, that you'll see at the end of this video. So the yellow oxide, I absolutely love how pink and orange, pink and yellow um, uh, work together. Uh, and I still have not explored nearly enough with just these colors. There's so much to do, such little time. <laughs> so yeah, this is just a straight orange. Um, I don't know if it's Liquitex or uh, it doesn't matter. It's uh, whatever orange you like. There's so many cadmium. There's different reds that are more orange. 
Um, I just wanted a warmer tone. Okay, so why am I doing it? Oh, there we go. I thought I was going to leave differences there, but uh, I suddenly changed my mind, as you can see. And, of course, just grabbing the end of that, that brush, scraping through, causing some more marks and some more subtle, subtle details so that you're always thinking about the big conversation and leaving things there for the small conversation. So I decided, well, I don't know, where am I going to put this gray? So we'll put it there. I put it closer to the black and white, which to me makes sense. Um, seeing it now, it might have looked better down below with the pink, but still on the black and white um, edge. So here is that neutral newsprint that if you, if any of you use that, it ages really well, just on its own. If, even if you leave them out in the, in the sun all the time on your table, it has a fading, but it looks really cool. And this is the, another pottery tool, I believe, but it has rubber ends rather than the metal ones. And I lost this one for a while. It was buried under my, one of my brush containers. So I know I have another one, but I can't find it. And of course, my trusty Brer, which still has blue on it. Um, what I do is um, once the paint builds up enough, I'll just, just soak the Brer in some water, um, trying to really pay attention. I don't want the, the metal parts rusting. And then you can scrape it off carefully without scratching the rubber part of the brayer. And now we're just getting a little bit more free and rolling those across, getting some white going and building some opaque layers on top. So as you can see in the orange and yellow section above, uh, you can see the black below. It's pushed back and then the orange and yellow, and then the scraping, and now you have a little bit of the white. So you've got about four layers here, or we, or I. And then, of course, my numbers. I make these uh, with the number stencils, the cardboard ones that you can get that are really large, and uh, they tear easily, but I find once you use them enough, or if you wanted to build some paint on them, they're uh, a little stronger. This is, I believe, not tissue paper, but tracing paper, which is a little more delicate, but um, still doable as long as when I'm gluing it down, I'm not pushing too hard with the brush. And you'll see that that happens here, but I was able to push that piece back in uh, right, where it, uh, right where it belonged and smooth it out. And it wouldn't really matter anyway, because these things, these things happen, and this is the way we make discoveries. So I'm liking a lot how I can still see that pink underneath. I'm sure there's some more transparent paper that I can find, but this, this will do. And again, keeping notes of, uh, you know, in your head, even writing notes down, um, Maybe it would have been better to, make, to use a stronger color where you know you're going to be building uh, on top. So knowing ahead of time, still using your intuition, but as we gain experience with our materials, I think that just builds in our intuitive process. Oh yes, I love that brown paper. And I'll bring it out from time to time, but it doesn't always go with what I'm working on. So you'll grab stuff, see if it fits, and if it doesn't, well, you just put it back. So liking the text and not using it uh, connected to such meaning because though that's, that can slow you down, depending on what you're really doing in the end. Maybe on the last layers, you want to save those collage pieces. Um, 
Say if you're using, if you found, came across some large letters in a magazine, if they're really big and bold, uh, they would be better to put down in your early, early layers. But maybe if it's something more meaningful and um, that you want to save, uh, saving those for your end layers or past the middle point. That's what I'm learning. Um, and I'm just learning this from watching um, different mentor artists that I follow. Again, I'll say I follow Adele, I follow Nicholas Wilton, I follow Louise Fletcher, and then there's some amazing abstract artists that I find on my Pinterest, and I study their color combinations, and that's where I'm at right now. Now that, uh, and you'll find, once you've, okay, once you've discovered, all right, I think I have some some of the layering process down that I like, that I want to use. Now, what could I work on next? And my next step is um, uh, color. So I love this. Um, newsprint again, black paint, and just your ordinary uh, letter stencils, number stencils. Uh, probably picked it up at Walmart or the dollar store. I would love to find some really large ones that are plastic. Um, now, the single ones that are cardboard work better because it's just one letter. You don't get the whole alphabet on a stencil. So you can place them easier where you want, upside down, sideways. And that's another thing that you might want to explore, you know, uh, early on. Just showing or even part of going off the edge with your letters and numbers. Okay, so I've discovered, yes, my, my uh, again, the tissue paper with my small dots, and I love that the pink is showing through. I love the orange uh, in the bottom uh, lines made with the orange pastel, oil pastel. I just use oil pastel over the acrylic. And uh, as Adele says, um, if you're really, you know, going for a finished piece that you want to sell later on, um, what she does is uh, in that stage, she then goes over it with, a, with an acrylic medium that seals it. And it doesn't have to be a heavy medium, but she likes using a gloss medium. And I've learned that, yes, it's really cool. And now I finish all my, my, my paintings and, of course, my collages with a gloss. It just, um, it's shiny, but it enriches the colors. It just brings out the color. So what's happening is I have uh, the composition that seems to be happening. And sometimes at the beginning, you won't think of a composition. So I went from a cruciform, right, the quadrant, and now... We're having a horizontal, horizontal threes. And you're always thinking of, uh, not always, but mostly we're thinking of odd numbers because that's how the world is made, nature, it's odd numbers. So there's a nice, uh, the dots, the random dots, the stencil girl stencil. And I love it because you can stencil in any shape that you like. You don't, you don't have to use all of the dots, you just use a little section. <laughs> and I really love how this area of this page turned out. And I should probably take a close up. Right, look at that. You see all the layers coming up? We, you can see the black underneath, the orange, the yellow, the white, and now the pink is over. And you can see them all interacting with each other. That's the effect I'm going for. <laughs> I can't believe how it's taken so long. <laughs> but that's just how I roll. I know everyone, you know, some people have just gotten into this collage um, so quickly. 
but my part my past art experience was uh realistic watercolor so then I had to unlearn everything to relearn abstract now this is a part of the page that I really wanted to talk about I've been dying to use this cardboard circle and as you can see I'm deciding okay what's the best way to use this I like the shape um, I like how it's going off the page so then I just decide to use my uh, China marker and make the line. And I don't know about you, it's just, ugh, the eye stays there. It's too much of a distraction. So then what I decided to do is, okay, well, I'm, it's, it's wax, so I'm not going to rub it off. I'm just going to put some more layers on top. And because of this covering up, uh, I decide it, it triggered a different response. I thought, okay, yes, with all these stencils and hard edge shapes, maybe a really cool difference would just be a loose diagonal swoosh of paint going up, bringing the eye up and over to the right so that the viewer's eye can then go back down. And now we've got this whole wonderful feeling uh, and, and maybe some lines I put in later and I know I do so stay to the end with the China marker and notice the freer and the, the freer the marks and the, hot, the, the more contrast they are with the orange it works better so I'm really loving this and I know I've done this in previous paintings another stencil girl stencil but I'm not sure I want those lines. Yes. So um, another way to create differences is the size of your tools right out of the gate. Choosing some small, medium, and large brushes. Um, just your craft brush. And I just wanted to create a texture. And then I go, oh, yeah. And that came to mind. Oh, I just love that. Yes, so that looks better. Yes, the page, and I, I noticed this time I don't have the border, but I really love the border. So the odd time I'll, I'll actually forget to do the border or not bother, but I really do like that border. It really does create a finished piece. So now I decided, okay, uh, this is newsprint painted, um, printed from the jelly plate, but just with a solid orange mixed with some other color, uh, another orange just to create a subtle difference. And then right away, so now I'm coming over with the orange. So I'm making, choosing a background color, but making another layer in a different way. So making those brush strokes and these are the dots and brush strokes or drops or I don't, I don't know what I call them but sort of like energy and uh, it does bring the eye down so there's an interesting thing that I do with that partial number one um, so again stay to the end <laughs> okay that's better so now that's just a little more there, right? And then just those marks with the pencil are enough to bring the eye down. Yes, and then uh, way better. And what a better way than just adding more paper or more collage, more of the same. So we're trying to do, uh, trying to always think differences without overthinking too much. It's a tricky balance, believe me. But once you start doing this all the time, uh, your favorites and your process just becomes part of you. It becomes embedded. All right. Yes, for sure. For sure. Now, 
What color? Am I going to go white or should I go black? Or a completely different color? Okay, so I'm going white this time. I love how this cardboard makes these lines. It's so cool. And then I wanted to slightly overlap. Oh yeah, look at that. So it's the same value, but just another layer on top. Then I decided, no, 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 whoa with the pink. Maybe it's too much. We don't want to overdo it because it's just beautiful over there on the left. Mm -hmm. And you'll know, once you just grab some things like I am here, moving them around, and once you go overboard, uh, your picture usually usually lets you know. So I don't even know if I let that dry, <laughs> but it doesn't smudge. So maybe it did. <laughs> yes, uh, black, getting pretty bold here. So now I'm looking for some contrast. Uh, looking at this now, it would have been fine just leaving it the way it was. Why I felt I needed one more layer, um, I'm not sure, but I only choose a few of them, as you can see. And I love these uh, various different dots. They're organic. And yeah, that's, that's really interesting. Wow. Okay. Now my numbers. I love numbers, numerals. I like these uh, small, and I want to make them go uh, vertical. And then it just comes over from the number one and helps the eye go up. And it's just a different position. And then there's the China marker where I'm just swirling in or continuing with those lines. And I just put a few, so i careful not to go overboard with certain things. It's sort of like a default. So you just have to keep an eye on that. And then there's just not enough up there at the top. And then I noticed the white was just a little high with the contrast. So I just dulled it down a little bit uh, by using more of the color that's in the background and just messing it up a bit as we go down. Yes. So now the eye is moving down. And then I'm focusing on this number one. Okay. No, we don't need any more dots, Michelle. Maybe I do. I'm not sure. Oh, white. Okay. <laughs> oh, yes. That is cool. So I think I'm done. But then I look at the number one and go, oh, maybe I want to do a mirror of it below. Or maybe I do this at the end. I'm not sure. Uh, but you'll see. So I just decided to put the tape on the one side. But I still think tape all around would give it such a wonderful, crisp, finished look. So I'm showing you right now all the different layers that you can see. And we just made, I just made those by just not doing too much thinking. And thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. Um, layers are getting better. And I hope to see you in the next video. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you again next week.